We'll turn now to our next guest. They're here to break down their newest book. It's called The Forgotten First. It details the lives of four incredible men as they became the first black players to play in the NFL and how their presence changed pro football forever. So let me bring in co-authors of the book, Newsday NFL columnist Bob Glauber in studio with me, and then Super Bowl champ, host of ESPN's Keyshawn, J. Will, and Max, Mr. Keyshawn Johnson himself. Key, let me start with you here, man. Kenny Washington, Woody Strode, Bill Willis, Marion Motley. You have been playing football and been in the game your entire life for the most part, from a kid, the college career, the pro career. How familiar were you with these names, if at all? I was familiar, let's say, with Kenny Washington because I'm from Los Angeles. UCLA is our rival when I went to USC. So I kind of know Kenny Washington, but didn't know the whole entire story behind Kenny Washington. So I started to learn more and more about the four, uh, the four gentlemen as we started to continue to do all of the research. And as you dive into it, you learn more and more and more about everything that went on. And so here we are with a great book. Me and Bob uh, put this project together in a collaboration. And I'm just excited that we're off to a good start. Uh, Bob, sometimes uh, there are accusations that people want to bury history. Sometimes we forget history. What's the case uh, here um, in that why we don't know these names? These are absolute pioneers. They are absolutely pioneers. And, you know, everyone knows that Jackie Robinson was yeah. the first African-American to break the color barrier in baseball. Now, if you ask anyone on the street just about who was the first African-American in the modern NFL, um, they don't know Kenny Washington or Woody Strode. They don't know that Bill Willis and Marion Motley played for the 1946 Cleveland Browns of a different league back then, but they integrated into the into the NFL. They were they were accepted into the NFL in 1950. And it's it's weird. And Keyshawn and I were both um, surprised at how little is known. And I think Keyshawn, I got the impression he got, he got a little angry that he didn't know that. And I was th that was pretty moving because it's like you hear names in history. You hear important names in history, and these guys are important names in the history of the biggest sport in America right now. Who knows about them? And Not many people. Key, I'll ask you to, to his point there. That were, were you mad that you didn't know them, like, like uh, some part of you didn't know the history, or were you more so mad that for whatever reason these names weren't talked about? Where, where did that anger, I guess, that Bob is talking about come from? Well, I guess it's a, it's a, it's everything, right? It's the the bigotry throughout the history in the National Football League and the world that we live in, professional sports. But then it, it just brings me to, you know, like you said, you don't want to use the word buried, yeah. but it wasn't talked about, right? It was in something that I learned about in school. Bob, we're so familiar, uh, just history, uh, with what Jackie Robinson went through, the threats and what he had to deal with with his family. Did these four? Did these four have to deal with the same type of uh, threats and things coming at them from the public? They absolutely did. Um, they were called racial epithets on a regular basis. Uh, there were death threats against Motley and Willis in the first season when they were ready to play a game in Miami. Paul Brown received letters plotting the deaths of these two black players because no black athletes were allowed to play in the state of Florida. Mm. Um, and so that was really eye-opening and jarring. Uh, Bill Willis played against a, a player in San Francisco who used, or Los Angeles, who used razor blades in, in the pads over his hands. And um, Kenny Washington and Woody Strode felt it regularly. Now, Los Angeles was a little bit more liberal at that time, so they were felt welcomed in, in many parts. But once they started playing in the NFL, first time they went on the road, they were told not to stay in the same hotel as the rest of their teammates. Oh. Well, the book, again, folks, is called The Forgotten First. It's in stores now. Bob, Key, good to see you. Pick it up. Go buy it. Go buy, yeah. I, did y'all catch that as he was rapping? He said, some people think I'm brash. <laughs> really? You, you mean you, you brought jokes today. Some people think you brash. Really? <laughs> Key's great. <laughs> Key is great. Well, guys, really, congrats on the book. Thank we'll you. see you all down the road. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.